G'day legends! You've probably seen a video from Electro Boom playing an electric guitar. At first, I thought he was pretty crazy, but then I remembered he's an engineer. <laughs> but the reason I think it didn't work very well was because it was shit. So I made my own. This one has sweet pegs with awesome strings going to a bridge. This bridge is isolated, making sure the strings don't touch. Like electro booms, I can amplify the sound plugging this into mains power. Let's give it a go. First, I need to check how much power is at the electric guitar. Great. We now have 238 volts AC to make sure the sound is awesome. So let's give it a go. A one, two, three. <coughs> uh, the f so I think I found the problem. The circuit breaker tripped. Hmm, no sparks. So I plugged it in again. And maybe because electricians are like gods, we can't get electrocuted. That's probably it. Ah, uh, <laughs> oh, I see the issue. I wired up the neutral and earth. You didn't think I was going to be that stupid, did you? You sadistic. F I'm not going to wire up live cables to my guitar. I mean, I'm not an engineer. Do not do your own electrical work. It is super dangerous. Make sure you use a licensed electrician. I don't care if they sell all the stuff of Bunnings. G'day, go f yourself. Good, thanks, sir. Ah, that's the way. Okay, so why was it okay for me to wire up neutral and earth to my guitar and not active neutral or earth? And why did my meter say 240 volts on it? Well, the latter, I'm gonna need to come clean. You see, I had the black lead from the meter connected to the guitar, and then the red lead from the meter connected to a power point. Then I just had some random red lead connected to the guitar. Never trust anyone on YouTube, even Electro Boom, as handsome as he is. So why exactly did I not get shock from the guitar? Well, to answer that, I'm gonna need to explain a little bit more about our electrical system and what an RCD is. In Australia, we have a typical supply voltage of around 230 volts AC. The connection between active and neutral is often referred to as potential difference. And I'll get into why this is important a little bit later on. The vast majority of electrical systems around the world contain some sort of earthing system. International Standard 60364 highlights different earthing systems that countries may want to adopt. When we connect up a load to a circuit, providing there's enough potential difference, we get current flow. And in actual fact, it's probably going to look a little bit more like this. Our supply voltage is actually alternating, but for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to use direct current and conventional current flow, which is the flow of current from positive to negative. In the event of a fault, this could mean the active conductor has touched some sort of part of the machine, the fault current should flow back up the protective earth and then back into the neutral. Depending on how isolated the piece of appliance is, it may also find a path back down through earth. You see, as per many standards across the world, if you've got exposed metal parts, you need to have it earthed. So check this out. That there is an earth tag. Now, let me just try. The connection between the earth and neutral bar is called MEN. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I mean M-E-N. MEN stands for Multiple Earth Neutral and is defined in AS3000 One Book to roll them on. It is a system of earthing in which the part of an installation required under this standard to be earthed are connected to a mass of earth. This is essentially referring to your earth stake and it should look a little bit like this. But I bet yours looks like this. I mean, it's protecting you from death. You wouldn't want to look after it or anything. Anyway, it goes on to say, and in addition, are connected within the installation to the neutral conductor of the supply system. This is just referring to the link between both the neutral and earth bar. 
yours should look something like this. That, my friends, is the vast majority of installations across Australia and the world. Now, remember how I spoke about potential difference. This was the difference between the active and neutral conductors. But what's the potential difference between neutral and Earth? Well, as you might have guessed, it's zero. They're connected together through the MEN link. And in actual fact, there is some floating voltage, so it's not exactly zero. That is how I knew that it was safe to connect neutral and Earth to the guitar. Plus, I've been doing this for 15 years. I know what I'm doing. Plus, I also tested the circuit at the appropriate fault current, which leads me to RCDs and why they are so important. RCD stands for Residual Current Device, also known as a safety switch, GFCI, ELCB, whatever you want. They're essentially detecting a leakage to Earth. In AS3000, an RCD is defined as a device intended to isolate supply to protect circuits, socket outlets, or electrical equipment in the event of a current flow to Earth that exceeds a predetermined value. Now this predetermined value in Australia has been set to 30 milliamps. And the reason for this is noted that 30 milliamps is designed to operate before fibrillation of the heart occurs. Now I actually spoke about this in one of my other React videos, so I'll leave a card to that one above. Also a quick note, just like the one pictured here, RCDs are often an overload short circuit and earth leakage device. But for the purposes of this video, I'm just gonna be speaking about the RCD component. When current flows through an RCD, it induces an electromagnetic field through something called a toroid. Let's just call it a donut. Because the current flowing through the active and neutral are the same, the electromagnetic fields are equal and opposite and thus cancel each other out. In the event of a fault, any stray current should go down the protective earth and then back through the MEN to neutral. Now, because the current flowing through the active and neutral are different, there's an imbalance between the electromagnetic fields, thus creating a residual current through the auxiliary coil. When the residual current reaches a predetermined value, let's say 30 milliamps, the relay will sense it and trip. Okay, yeah, I think I broke the cover, but here is the earth tag. But what happens if that tag comes off? In the event of an earth fault in an appliance without a protective earth, it's likely that the appliance will continue to run, provided that it is completely isolated from earth. If the appliance is completely metallic, it obviously presents a massive hazard. If a sparky was to come up and touch it, it's likely that nothing would happen because we are gods. No, that's not true. By touching the appliance, you're likely to provide an appropriate path for that current to flow. But with an RCD installed, it'll just trip. So, I know what you're thinking. Dave, why don't you just hook up the active wire to the guitar? I mean, the RCD is going to protect you, right? Well, yes, but only above 30 milliamps. And as I showed in one of my other videos, Getting shocked by 1 to 2 milliamps is painful enough. So I might just leave that to Medi or Medi. So with no potential difference at the guitar and no current flowing, how do we trip the RCD? Well, there actually was current flowing. It just wasn't at the guitar. You see, I've got multiple things plugged into the circuit at once all providing juicy amounts of current to flow through the circuit. You see, the top two strings of the guitar were connected to neutral and earth. And then when I touched the guitar, I was able to provide enough current flow through my finger to make sure that it goes through the RCD and then trips. Well, the first time I did kind of have some help from this little guy. <laughs> okay, that wraps up my recreation of Electro Boom's electric guitar and why it is so important to have safety switches, RCDs, GFCIs installed in your home. If you've made it this far through the video, I must be providing some sort of value. And if you want to support me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also the like button. Also, I've been getting some amazing suggestions on what videos I should make. I know you guys absolutely love Electro Boom and so do I, but I just recently did one on Richard Hammond and Brainiac. So if you would like to leave comment and suggestions below, that would be amazing. Until next time, do not do your own electrical work. I don't care how many snags Bunnings are going to give you.